I have come across another Heathkit model IM12. This is not the one that I have previously restored. You'll notice that the knobs are different. Uh, it doesn't have that little tiny ding here, but it is in immaculate condition. I'll also point out that it is a little lighter gray than the other one. That said, I'm going to open this one up. We're going to look at the condition of this unit, uh, make sure everything's okay. And this is just going to be a, a really quick video of going through this, what to look for in these units uh, and get this one uh, inspected to see if it's safe for operation. So let's get started. This one was also factory assembled and it does carry a serial number on it. And right off the bat we see that there is in fact a full complement of tubes so that's a uh, that's a good thing and not much by way of debris in the case very clean everything in this unit appears to be all original i don't see anything changed out at all this is a single capacitor right here rated to 150 volts i'll be testing and reconditioning this capacitor there is also um 20 microfarad dual down here that needs to be tested as well. Those are the three capacitors that require immediate consideration to make sure that this unit is safe to operate. We're gonna take the tubes out and we're gonna check them right quick. 6X4, looking good. Kill the lights for this one. The OA2 reads just between the L and the A. You can see it glowing over here, just like my other OA2. They all seem to read at that area. And the new one that I have in the box also does. So I assume that they're all the same and the other one does work fine, so I'm going to say that one's good. 12AT7, test good. 12BY7, good. 12AX7, yep, good enough. 5879, looking good. So I've got the capacitor checker set up to uh, test and rebuild these capacitors if possible. And we'll just... And we see 2550, 100. It's important that this be removed from circuit or current will flow across through other means. So there's 100. Cranked it up to 250 volts. You could see it's sitting there at 3.5 milliamps. That's a considerable amount of uh, current right there and passing through. So what you're also seeing is that it is dropping and dropping at this rate and seems absolutely fine. So I'm going to wait until it drops down to an appropriate number, at which point it will be safe to increase the voltage because with the voltage, the current will increase again. So I will come back. As we approach one milliamp, the eye is just starting to open. And it took a further 20 minutes to get to one milliamp. Let this side go the whole evening, and I think 55 microamps is about as low as it goes. Recheck of the first side one last time shows about 80 microamps. Uh, absolutely fine. We're going to put this capacitor back and move on to the last electrolytic capacitor. I've had to detach the connections from this capacitor in order to recondition it. We'll get it up on the IT11 and get it started. This electrolytic's been connected for a couple of hours now. It's dropped down to about 210. I don't see it going any lower. Probably sit here for another couple hours. We'll probably drop it down to 200, but it's safe to run. Again, not optimal like a new capacitor, but we're going to reconnect these wires over here. Everything's reconnected. We can now bring this device up safely on the Variac. Right now I got 50 volts AC, is pulling five watts with a faint glow that can't be seen in the camera. Uh, this is only to check to make sure that there are no uh, dead shorts that are gonna cause something to set on fire or something. So I'm gonna be kicking this up now. 90 volts is drawing 15 watts. We could see that the two pilot lamps are lit. Everything's looking fine. I'm gonna bring it up to the full 117. 117 volts is pulling 28 watts. I'm gonna let it sit here for a while and stabilize. We can see the, the tubes are nice and illuminated. Everything's looking okay. I have a two kilohertz 1.6 volt RMS waveform going into the unit right now. The unit is showing a 1.2 and a half. I will now go and uh, 
adjusted the potentiometer to show 1.6 on this uh, scale right here. The scale is now showing 1.6, the voltmeter calibration is finished. We can see checking the 10 volt scale, we could also see 1.6 looks good as well. And with this configuration set up, I put my balance knob in the middle as shown. I'm going to set my level now. Let me turn this slightly here for better view. I set my level now to 100%. Trying to see the parallax here. That looks about 100% right there. And then I'm going to set the range to 2,000, 20,000 just like that and what i want to do with the balance in the middle i'm not going to touch this balance again is i want to tune this for the lowest possible deflection right down here and i'm going to drop this down to 30 percent and see that i could get eh, it looks like right over there and once i'm there what i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust that other potentiometer i got the screwdriver in there now for the minimum deflection and so going all the way down there I'm gonna bring it down to 10 percent and even three percent see what I could get out of this retune and go to one percent that looks about uh, as low as I'm going to get it, that, that brings the balance about to the middle. We're going to call that done. And then I'm going to bring the sensitivity right back up to 100. As shown, I'm going to bring this back to set level, right? I'm going to make sure that that level is still right there at around 100%. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it for the 200, 2000 mark. And I'm going to go to the other side of the scale, the opposite end. So I'm going to turn this all the way until I get minimum, and there's minimum about there, right? So I'm going to bring this down here and see if we can bring minimum here. Now this time, I'm going to have to adjust the, um, there's a capacitor through the hole of the cover on this side. I'm going to adjust that now. This one's a little more difficult to find, but once you have it in position, you can start turning, as I'm doing now. Once you reach the low point right here, and that will tune right to there, and turn this again to bed here, and I will tune again, and turn this again on the top, and tune this again, and we could go down another percent, and I'm just going back and forth between the two, right there, and I'll tune this here, and turn this here. Another percent, right about there. So it's to get a little squirrely after a while. Right about there. And I'm down at the one percent already. One percent, things get a bit difficult. You have to remember where the lowest point you saw was and then bring it back to that if you can't find anything else. So right about there, that's the lowest setting. So that one is done, that's a difficult one to do. For the last step, I'll be putting the case back on the unit. I'll turn the uh, switch down to the 2200 and set the frequency to around 60 Hertz until I see some deflection here. And I'll bring the sensitivity down appropriately to capture that. Then I will adjust the rear potentiometer for the minimum deflection as shown here. There you go, everything's calibrated. I figured the best test of this unit would be simply to run it against the other IM12 that I've restored. Uh, the new unit, by the way, is the one on the left. My restored IM12, obviously, the one on the right. I have the split test signal that I've been using. Uh, the two kilohertz is coming out of the field tech. Uh, we can see that on the voltmeter setting, both of them are showing 1.6 volts RMS. On the right side, I ended up at about 0.21, 0 0.22% total harmonic distortion. It moves back and forth. On the left side, I ended up with uh, about 0.16, 0 0.18, 0 0.17, 0.18% total harmonic distortion. So we're looking at 
0 0.04, let's see, 0 0.04, 0 0.05% off between these two units. I'd say that's remarkably close considering that um, none of the other internal components or resistors or whatnot have been checked on this. Only the, the filter caps and uh, the basic um, calibration was done. That was all. Nothing else has been done on this. So this is going to conclude the safe as possible, though there's no real safe, but safe as possible uh, quick test and turn up of a Heathkit IM12 to take care of all the prerequisites that you need to be able to apply power to this device, calibrate it and get it going. Not perfectly accurate, but just to demonstrate that such a device works. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.